Hey everybody, I'm very excited to bring this video to you today. I hear a lot of questions about telemetry and how a lot of people find it very overwhelming. So today I'm gonna to show you in four simple steps how to use telemetry to reduce your lap times. On top of that, I'm gonna show you through these four steps how to copy a 7,000 rated iRacing driver. And for those who aren't familiar with I ratings, that rating signifies that this driver is in the top 0.36% of all iRacing drivers in the world. For example, to give you an idea, Max Verstappen's I rating is 8,800. So who is this 7K rated driver, you may ask? He is Soilio Almeida. You may know him as Porsche Esports Challenge Canada's champion. He's also a two-time iRacing F3 champion, and he's won a whole bunch of other titles, which I'm not gonna list here. He's a straight up awesome guy. And more recently, he's gotten to um, real life racing. So you can check him out on Instagram at Soilio. For this analysis, we're gonna check out our laps at Watkins Glen using a 992 Cup car. He did a 145.390 versus my 145.797. So, which is a four tenths of a difference. So I guess I should change my channel to the last four tenths. <laughs> I will be showing you how to do this in MoTeC, but if you wanna follow along in your favorite telemetry software, now's the time to do it. So let's get started. First, you're gonna to need to identify where there's the biggest room for improvement. To do this, use the section or turn time differentials and see where you are slower. Use that to prioritize where to focus first. Your software may show it to you in a different way. So for me, I have mine set up so it lists where I'm faster or slower than the reference lap, both by sector and by corner. In my case, we can see that I'm on the left column and Suelio's on the right. These are our fastest laps that we did on Watkins with identical conditions and same car setup. I will have the conditions in the description below so you can try it out for yourself. And if you wanna check out my track guide for Watkins, I'll put it in the description as well. In the table, the faster sector is in black. And as you can see, I'm basically slower almost everywhere. Once in a while though, you get lucky like me and you're a bit faster than an alien in a sector for some negligible amount of time, like my sector five. Anyhow, I am at least a 10th slower in sectors two through four. So I'm gonna pick sector three where he is 0.112 seconds faster to find our last 10th there. See what I did there? Now, step two, zooming into sector three, we're gonna use the speed trace to identify where you are slower. Telemetry traces are actually extremely simple to understand. They basically tell you something about the car at a given point in the track as the lap progresses from left to right. For example, the speed trace here will tell you the speed of the car at a moment in the lap. And at this particular moment in sector three, the car is traveling at 156.6 kilometers per hour and here it is at 137.3 kilometers per hour. And we can see that the car is slowing down as we progress into the turn. How you use this is you compare your own trace with a faster driver. I've now added Suelo's trace for his fast lap and here my speed trace is in orange while Suelo's is in white. And if your speed is lower, you are slower. Doesn't take a genius to figure that out, but this will show you where you have lower speed. In my case, in sector three, we see that my speed trace is lower when the car is slowing down. So he is going faster than me in entering these corners, which means he requires less time to complete that part of the track. You'll notice that I'm actually faster when the car is speeding up and exiting the corners, but the speed difference is much smaller when compared with when I am slower. So overall, he completes the sector in less time than I do. On to step three, now that we know where we are slower, we can use the input traces to identify why we are slower. In areas where you have lower speed, you wanna look for what you are doing differently. Let's look at our pedal traces in turn six in sector three, for example. These traces tell me how much throttle or brake I'm using at a given moment. In this case, my brake trace is in red and Suelo's is in again white. In this example, we can see that during deceleration, where my speed is lower, I apply much more initial brake, I brake later, then I trail off quite rapidly, while Suelu applies an earlier but much softer brake and trails off much more gradually. Looking at my steering, I also try to turn a lot harder as well. From this, we can see that what I probably tried to do was get the car slowed down, 
do a lot of turning, then get on the gas. Where Suelu has a much smoother transition from slowing to turning without sacrificing his exit. And in doing so, he carries a lot more speed into the corner than I do. At one point, he carries 15 kilometers per hour more than I did. Step four, next you should look at the driving line to identify how you can carry more speed. Looking at the GPS trace for turn six, where my line is in red and Suelo's is in white. We can see that my line is sharper going into the corner and slightly less curved coming out. This confirms that I was trying to get the car turned more than Suelo when we were entering the corner. More importantly, herein lies the crux of why I am slower. A sharper arc has a smaller radius, which means speed has to be lower. It's just physics. And I will be explaining how much time a smaller radius can cost you in my next video. But in trying to get the turning done, I have forced my line to be sharper and thus slower. Normally, you do this to allow for more acceleration when you exit the corner. But in this case, you can see that it's not necessary. You can almost get as much acceleration done at the exit without slowing down and turning as much as I did. So what I need to do is go focus on a smoother brake transition and more gradual and earlier turn in so that I can keep my speed higher and find that last 10th. Now that you know where, why, and how you can go faster, all that's left to do is for you to get behind the wheel and start practicing how to drive like an alien. Before I sign off, here's the lap that I did after studying Suelo's telemetry. After a bit of practice, I managed to close the gap by 25%, cutting that 4 tenths into 3 tenths.